Yeah. Well, good afternoon. Yeah, well, <laughs> and the people that is online too. Uh, very happy to be here. It's my first time doing a long trip because I am from Peru, but I live in Brazil. It's like uh, 14 hours <laughs> far away. And um, well, I will talk about my experience that I have uh, researched a little about how is the file is attacking Linux. Hear about myself. Uh, I really like community because we learn and also I participate in, in the Kubernetes documentations, helping in the uh, helping in the translation in Portuguese and Spanish, mainly in Spanish. And uh, currently uh, in this release, I am uh, working in this in the release docs or of 1.26. If everyone is interested, yeah, uh, you can also ping me. And also, uh, I really like cloud native and security and tropical weather. <laughs> yeah, I think it's an overview about myself. And we will talk uh, about files, because when you try to search this in Google, you will find a lot of infor information. And next, we will give a brief introduction about eBPF and how can we use these tools to detect this kind of attack. It's, it's a specific detection that, that I will use in my demo that will be about files. Um, yeah. Well, the definition about files, <laughs> as you can see, is some malicious code will try to run the, to execute it in our system, but without using the file system is the main definitions about files. So that's keep in mind. And also, it's very it's known as a non malware or zero footprint because of this, because they it's uh, difficult to detect because traditional security tools use file system to detect this kind of attacks or issues and when you see it's something like you also will hear about living of the land some expression and also you can uh, the files when you try to search you will see that they have a lot of material or a lot of attacks that's happening in windows traditionally more in windows we have several attacks that it's already happened and they use legitimate programs like PowerShell to introduce, like, uh, like we can see in this image, and it's, it's, it seems that is the, the normal process, but the threat actor is using this to introduce some, uh, some payloads that could damage or could uh, insert malicious code. And when also when we see about files, uh, we will read that this advanced persistent threat APT, you, and this is because uh, generally when you are hearing about files, is because it's on against big companies or between nations. So you see that the hackers put a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, force or a lot of the, uh, yeah, they put a lot of effort. Sometimes the words, in, the English words is <laughs> missing, <laughs> but well, put a lot of effort to to attack. And yeah, this is a famous a famous case that is the Cobalt Kitty, that uh, they attack and this payload or this files attack. It's like one year that it's happening inside of the system before the security team or anyone detect this attack and they use like PowerShell or uh, legitimate programs like in, in this case it was Cobalt Strike but this is more the literature that we will hear about files attack in Windows but now uh, I will talk how can happen this files attack in Linux because right now our Kubernetes containers and everything is running 
in Linux. And mainly, uh, when we talk about files in Linux, it's using the LD preload or ptrace, or this main FD create syscall that it will be the focus of, of my demo. But this is the, the common artifacts that it could happen fileless in Linux. So as you can see, first, we, some threat actor will, uh, will try to use these legitimate programs in Linux to try to load some malicious code and execute it, basically. So, uh, the attacks is already happening, like you can see this research, and also it was like some inspiration because sometimes we read about some security research that say how is happening fileless, and I want to simplify it a little how, uh, how is doing this, only to demonstrate uh, running a container, how can we use MainFD. So, uh, when you see attacks in the wild, is that it's already creating some malicious code that is trying to use this technique in the containers. So, uh, some part, you know, these files introduce some malware, and as you can see, uh, our static scanning tools don't help us to detect this kind of attack. Because when we run, this is a legitimate program. It's not a vulnerability that we could uh, see it or, or our scanning, static scanning tools help us to detect this is a fileless vulnerability, for example. Right? So it's not the concept. Uh, that's the reason that we can find this, this kind of, of attacks using these specific tools. So, uh, to following, uh, this is uh, some of the attacks that I will, is uh, about Linux, uh, is Suri Golan, Crypter. It's a code that is using main FD create. Now, already it was detected by, by several security research teams that is on the, in the wild, that is the expression. <laughs> and this is the main code. Uh, I send you, I have the, all the reference in the slides. But basically, they are uh, using encryptations. So it's not only using the, the system call that like I will use it. It's also using encryptation to help us, to help with the obfuscation. And here is the main code about run from memory that is the main part that will be uh, called the call main FD create syscall. Try to uh, write this malicious code in this new file descriptor and execute it. So I will use this, this is the main part. So uh, this main FD create is the most easily way to create files, it could be created in another ways, but this is the more simple. You only have to call the syscall and they will create um, a file descriptor. And you have many codes in the internet that is already using this. So this is only just keep in mind that that's the reason that I am using main FD create when you. And uh, next, I a brief introduction about eBPF to see how can help us to detect this kind of, of attack or this malicious. And here uh, is an overview how can be uh, eBPF we have, because when we talk about eBPF, we will talk a lot of user, exp user space and kernel space. Um, we have our system calls, and we have the programs, the eBPF programs that is loaded in the kernel. Uh, some, maybe I, I put some 
uh, some other things like the Linux security for me it's a little <laughs> Linux security mold, models that also it's uh, you hear a lot about Linux security models because is before eBPF uh, we write some code in the kernel using this but right now we are using more eBPF because it's like a more techno a modern technology that give us benefits and here we have like programs like Falco Trace and Tetragon that I will use it to try to detect the main FD create okay well and uh, as you can see when we talk about eBPF we will talk about kernel events it's a lot of events that is inside of our kernel and we have like kernel functions, system calls, but it's not uh, only the system call right? because we have trace points and I uh, put in this information because when you see the rules that I will use it is related maybe at trace points or some k groups, it depends how you are designed your eBPF program. Okay. So, um, the trace point, here is an overview the how can you use these instrumentations. Uh, basically, is a static instrumentation point. And they, you can instrument several things inside of the, uh, these eBPF programs. When the, the events happen, it will attach these eBPF programs is when it's starting to filter this information. And also we have the K proofs. And well, uh, I was reading about these trace points K proofs. Um, when you when you have both, you you can try to use it more trace point because it's more stable. But in some uses cases, you only have K proofs on events that is only supported by K proofs. And it will depends that uh, the design of the type of event that you want to filter. This is, well, before I was only talking about the, these k proofs and trace points because in the rules you will see this, these words, so just keep in mind. And right now I will uh, talk about how uh, I developed the, the demo and I will run using Falco, Tracy and Tetragon, this, this rules. So, here we have these three tools that they use eBPF. Uh, my, my demos, it's based in the default installation of these tools because they both support uh, Linux machines and Kubernetes. And I install it in the default version in Kubernetes clusters. So, just one second. Um, my demo is trying to detect this suspicious malicious code that is these three main steps, three main lines that is I am calling the main FD create and next I am uh, writing in this new file descriptor this is, that is in memory I am writing some malicious code né, in this file descriptor that is already in memory and next, I try to uh, execute this malicious code, but it's in the file descriptor. And we are spawning this in the display name that uh, you put some, for example, a running process that, that in my case will be nginx. And in this way, it's spawned using with this exec and uh, spawning with the malicious code. And also, the file descriptor, uh, if you can see the path, is the process file system. So this is the main code that uh, it was before the explanation of a Zuri code, that it was how it was implemented in this specific way. You can implement in several other ways, but this is following that it was uh, in the wild attack about this, this Zuri that I put in the before slide. Um, this is the code. Uh, I just put it some more 
uh, more print lines. And also all the code is in my repository that they, they have the code and also they have uh, a little explanation about each runtime at the demo and the steps. Um, next, I built this code and I inserted in a container. I build the image and I insert this binary to use it inside in a container. And that's all. That's the reason that uh, when you see in the demos, this demo main FD is because I, uh, I build this code and I put it inside of my container. So uh, next, I, I will start with Falco. This is the main architecture that you can find in the documentation of the, the project. And yeah, the rules you know, is in the, the user space. Uh, they have predefined rules, macros. This part of the rule engine you know, that you can see is, uh, here is the rule you know, that I wrote uh, by default, uh, it uh, don't detect exactly the, the main FD create. So you can customize with some other rules. If that's the case, you, you can edit in the Kubernetes mode, you edit a config map. That is the, this is the print about the config map that I edit. And I try to filter by uh, basically the spawnet, exec CBE and exec bit that is two ways that you can execute the system's calls. Um, yeah, and I try to also filter by the path, the proc self. And this is uh, the recording. You hope, yeah. uh, I am running the main FD with the, only using uh, EL, uh, it's not a malicious code, it's only a ELF that is printing the date, but it could be replaced with any malicious code, so you can run it without problem in your house. It's like only to, to try to trigger this main FD create and simulate the process of, of, of uh, a fileless execution. And yeah, um, I, I could fix this, this rule because I was trying to talk with, uh, f with some friends of Falco and I think I have some output that I could improve. I will try to improve and I will do up the updates in my repository. But I, I think uh, that that's is, is detected. You can see that is detected execution. I have uh, some others uh, run C execution that is it's appearing. Uh, right now, the main FD create is the syscall itself is not supported. That's the reason that I am not, not using in this rule. Uh, but yeah. Um, and next, I will show here in Tetragon. Uh, we have also, uh, as you can see here, the collectors. Né, is, they have the collector in the kernel space that it means that you have to you have to write your your rules or your filters that they can map the, the can apply these filters to show to show you uh, that uh, the, the the events that you are looking uh, for example uh, in the before you don't you don't have some signatures by default, but you have to create in this collector. That's, I think it will be more clear about this collector. Uh, seeing the, the tracing policy, <laughs> yeah, it's the name. It's a custom resource definition. And in this case, because I am trying to look at the main FD create, that is the, the main point, the system call, I am uh, define it in the rule right, that if some sys called main FD create and also another sys called the sys close. Right? And I think the, the main point of this rule because they have this feature that is the sign kill that you, after I find my, 
main FD create, yeah, no, it's, it's the, here is in the execution CV because they have the main FD and the execution itself is this malicious code. And when he noticed that they have this other, this match of main FD and execution CVs, I will kill the process when it's matching the proc cell file descriptor. That is uh, the execution of my program. No, my sorry. Uh, if I if I will um, thread actor, I can see this this rule, and uh, I could create another folder to 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 apply my malicious code like proc cell file, and I could bypass this rule. Uh, that's the reason that also I see I know that they are uh, doing a pull request with. Uh, better approach that it's using iNotes. Also it's in my notes because it's, in, it's for merges. But I think uh, the most complex when you are trying to create your rules is about the security research knowledge. No? Uh, I don't know if I, I share my, my experience cell, but I am uh, work as a developer and next like as a cloud architect, the Bobs, and going to security. And it's different when you are a security research that uh, because you are dedicated to create this kind of information that it's, uh, yeah, you will see that it's very difficult when you try to search or dig information about the attacks in specific cases, because it's always a way to bypass this rule or another methods to to the threat actor try to create some malicious code. So here is the action that you can see that is killing the process. And next I will uh, talk about Tracy. Uh, in the case of Tracy, the rule it was already there. So I, I didn't have to create it. <laughs> because uh, security research already put the, the rule there. So, but I will explain a little about the rule. Uh, this, uh, this architecture about how eBPF in Tracy works, uh, as you can see also we have the EBP, eBPF collector, no? but it's filtered by the events of the of the signatures that is preload because when you run also in the next slide you will see that when is running tracing the mode eBPF, tra uh, eBPF trace they generate a lot of events but in this case there are uh, filtered by only the events that is necessary for the signatures the signatures is already the all the rules preload that will detect some kind of security issues. So these signatures that will be like the rules, the filters that already created in Falco Tetragon uh, that is trying to detect some malicious actions. Uh, you can see some default signatures are created there and also you have the reference. Um, I only doing this demo with some of the rule that is the files. And here, this is the rule that it's, it's already there. I, I didn't write it. It's, and the main uh, is also trying to look, in this case, is using trace points to try to catch this e eBPF, uh, the kernel events using trace points with eBPF. And the first two rules, it's trying to find the main FD. And the others is also the other parts that is also related with uh, temporary folders eh? that it's other way that you can create files. And here is the demo with, uh, with Tracy. So here is the default output when you are running as a tool of the detections that it's detected some malicious code and then that's printed. And here it's, um, this is the mode that is running in mode 
that uh, eBPF trace that they you can use without filters and they are they you will see all the bands that is producing or you can put some several filters that it's uh, that is relevant for you so in this case I, I only put in like uh, how how can you capture a binary that is a, a common thing that that a forensic thing it's interesting that it's someone trying to execute some something and you can capture this and try to analyze after so this is in the mode of the eBPF trace and well yeah uh, if you can see a complete attack uh, I only explain a little that will be running in memory and even is without encryptation né? because when the attack itself happened they use some uh, packer or encryptation only to create the part of obfuscation it would be more difficult to detect and as you can see uh, when really attacks happen in the wild they are have a more complex and that's something that you can be uh, awareness that mm, that's the reason that it's only yeah it's the end <laughs> because in the other part we have run in memory and you have more root kids uh, that is uh, the security is very difficult and I think my sharing in about this experience about searching about files is uh, yeah it's really hard the security in, in the in, when you try to create some rules or try to apply it. how can I detect files and I will try to put the rule because when you read uh, in this case I only use main FD create but you can bypass with using other things and when you are reading you see that uh, in some other blocks for example they they could use in another way is like yeah it's down on the rabbit hole because you are thinking that with this rule you are catching that event but itself when it's happening or when you see in the blocks of the security people that is, is searching it's uh, yeah it's, it's always another way you, you can bypass and I only I think I want to give a thank you for the three projects because these projects are sharing their knowledge in security because you can see in I see I put in the reference but they already have some security default rules that you can try to catch and learn how they are doing and I think this is uh, important yeah here are my contacts and if you have any doubt or you also want to have some notes how you can uh, improve the rules or everything uh, yeah I am available and yeah my thank you to all the projects that they help me when I go to the slack of every project yeah I think it will be that's all thank you